Hej, for det er dig. Jeg tror, at jeg kan tage op med ham, ikke? Oh. I know it. Right. <laughs> That's free, man. So, my name's Simon. I'm from Warrington. And I work for an import and export company. And the big boss there is a bit of a sleazeball. You know, he goes, comes in in office in the morning. He goes up to all the girls like, Hello, my darlings. How are you? He's Indian, but it's a shit impression. <laughs> so, he's come off French there. So, just, so like, hello, my darlings. He gives them all the hugs. And they're like, oh, what's he like? He came up to me the other day and went, all right, son, how are you? So I just turned around slowly and went, Dad! <laughs> where have you been for the last 32 years? I didn't know I'm part Indian. I'm having Diwali off. So anyway, I got a verbal warning for that one. Um, <laughs> that was my first offence. My second offence in work was when he found out I was doing stand-up comedy. Because he walked into the office and went, Hey, comedian, tell me a joke that's funny. So I showed him my pay slip. That was a written warning. That was a written warning. You know, my mum comes to a lot of my gigs, um, not to show her support, just chasing me for back rent when I live with her. <laughs> she's not getting it, so she's here, I'm gonna have to duck out. I got, I'm married, ladies and gentlemen, I'm married, and uh, when I got married, um, it's a beautiful day, if you're married, you know. And when the bride's walking down the aisle, the father and bride's walking her up there, he hands her over to you, and they usually say something like, look after her, or, you mess this up, I break your legs. <laughs> so he passes her over, he looks, at, looks me up and down, leans in and goes, hey. I'm like, what? You said we weren't wearing a waistcoat. I'm like, what are you on about? He said, I've left mine at home. I can go and get it. I said, we're in the wedding. Sit down. So that was my interaction with the father-in-law, first thing. Me and my wife, uh, we have a two-year-old son and he's fantastic, but I'm astounded how good he is at technology, just at two years old. You know, he knows how to turn the TV on, the PlayStation on, he even knows how to use a computer mouse. Not creating his own folders or anything, doing a bit of Excel, this is my file. But you know, he knows by moving the mouse, move something on the screen. And this is all at two years old, it's got me thinking. Because I remember being at primary school, and me and my friends were still folding paper into a diamond, going, pick a colour, A, E, D, pick a number, one, two, <laughs> you're a dick. <laughs> That's what we were doing at primary school, and he's there with all this technology at two years old. So I'm worried, because I had to let him play computer games earlier than I wanted to. You know, I don't want him to be at school where all the other lads are on lunch, talking about the Call of Duty or the new Grand Theft Auto. And my lads at the other end of the table playing with old style games, rolling marbles and some dominoes. So I'm worried, but I'm worried about too much games too soon. Because I was walking back the other day, and these two lads walked past me from school, and this is a true story. And they said to me, well, they actually said to me, they walked past and they said to each other, it's up, down, left, right, uppercut. Up, down, left, right, uppercut. So I thought, I hope he's telling him instructions for a computer game and it's not some kind of fighting in school. Because I just had visions of these two lads in the playground going, right, that's it, I'm going to batter you. Whips out a controller, it's up, down, left, right, uppercut. Hadouken! Oh, God. So I'm worried because it might be a lot different than when I went to school. I, I, like I said, I'm from Warrington, and I went to a rough school in Warrington, and we played British Bulldog. Do you remember British Bulldog? Yeah. Yes. The survivors are here. Fantastic. <laughs> you did well. You did well. And like I said, it was a rough school, and we played it on concrete. It was, yeah, you're right. It was dangerous. Very dangerous. I mean, I'm six foot, and there's nothing to me. I'm terrified of it. I'm terrified. So it was survival of the fittest. Well, in our school, the fattest, probably. Dinner ladies in Nowell, they're on the side having a smoke there, taking bets. Like, two to one of that fat kid's going to take them all out. <laughs> He's not even going to drop his ginsters. So halfway through the game, my nerves are shot. I'm barely holding back the tears. I'm getting heckled. Dinner ladies are like, make sure you tackle that lanky streak of piss. <laughs> I'm like, mum, come and help. <laughs> For God's sake. <laughs> Yo, I recently got my hair cut. And uh, I realised I'm getting old, because when I looked down, I saw more grey hair coming off than brown. So I thought, right, enough of this. I zipped up my trousers and said, cut the top hair now. <laughs> it's just for men's stings, I tell you. 
You know, my wife was looking at uh, photographs of recently of two years ago. Uh, it's when we had our first child. And he was like a newborn, and she was like, instead of going, oh, look at him, she looked at the photo and looked at me and went, you used to look all right. <laughs> like, hey? She went, what happened? I said, what do you mean I'm the same guy? She went, no, no, no. Because when we first met, you kind of had an air of mystery. You know, you were mean, a bit mean, a bit moody. You know, you kind of, you didn't know what I was going to do. I could snap any minute. And she went, now you just seem like a goofball that argues with people about the price of corned beef. <laughs> so I said, why? What's different? And she's worked it out because it, apparently it's the power of sight. Because two years ago, I started wearing glasses. Now, before... Obviously. It's like Superman and Clark Kent, wasn't it? It's still me. <laughs> it's still me. So before, I was like always squinting all the time. Like it's a picture in our lounge, our wedding picture, and my wife's there, she's looking all pretty, hand, you know, smiling away. And I'm there like this. <laughs> you know, I just walk around like Clint Eastwood in Dirty Harry all the time. Like. <laughs> so when we go on, on dates and like we went for a meal, she'd always think that I'm like, I'm really jealous, got to kick off. Like a waiter would bring a drink over and I'd just be like... <laughs> she's there thinking, he's going to go. He thinks he's making a move. And I'm there like, the fuck? She's like, oh my God, he's so jealous. What I'm actually thinking is, it's not Foster's a Carly. What the hell does that say? <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've been loving it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>